There is something about this that has evoked a fear response that I have never seen in my lifetime yeah. around a multinational issue, except for maybe some moments where like we thought there was a 1% chance that we were going to end up in like nuclear war. Yeah. You know, outside of that, like this is as high as the scale goes. And so I wanted to talk for a second about what makes something scary. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because maybe by looking at what yeah. makes something scary, we can find some ways into like good ways to cope with that fear. Yeah. So based on a lot of psychology that you're aware of, what are some of the things that make something scary? I'll start by saying, arguably, of all our emotions, mm -hmm. the first one to evolve was disgust. Mm. Because that primal movement to spit out mm -hmm. something that mm -hmm. doesn't taste right, yeah. doesn't smell good, is absolutely central it's to survival. It's a survival mechanism. You yeah, bet. totally. You mm -hmm. bet. And the neural hardware for that is deeply rooted in kind of the evolutionary stack of the structuring of the brain over time. It's way down close to the basement. Mm -hmm. So that really speaks to the primal fear of contamination. Yeah. It's a very deep thing. And just a sidebar, we could do a whole podcast on fears of contamination, mm. subtle and gross, the ways they affect people at the individual level, driving a lot of OCD-ishness, which are about rituals of dealing with contamination or fear of contamination. And you can see the ways in which there's Purity scale. tests in society. Oh, we're moving up. You bet. Racial that. and ethnic stuff. Oh, you're and... totally is such a smart boy oh, you are. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you could see where I was going. Totally <laughs> right. Exactly. So number one, anything that could feel invasive and contaminating. Second, it's invisible. Yeah, that's a huge part of it, right? It freaks people like, out. You could, just, you could just walk anywhere and all of a sudden you have this thing and then you don't know. Yeah. And I think that that's a lot of it too. It's that feeling of like, then you don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not. Maybe you have it, maybe you don't. Yeah. Like, oh, I've got a little tingle in my throat now just thinking about it. Maybe I'm infected. Yeah. Another thing that tends to drive fear is the rate at which a threat mm -hmm. is coming at you. How, how rapidly it's moving and how um, intensive the stimuli is becoming in terms of loudness, brightness, and so forth. Uh, if, for example, you hear a uh, fire engine, mm. in the distance you can barely hear it, and it seems like it's moving away. But if you hear a fire engine and it's clearly moving closer and it's getting louder and louder and suddenly the horns are blaring outside your house, wah, you know, your heart rate's going to stem pretty fast. So this has come upon us very quickly. Yeah. That's another major factor. Then there's the factor in which of helplessness or agency. In other mm. words, if it's, if it's a threat that's coming, like a really serious hurricane, I think there's a lot about a hurricane that's a fairly decent analogy yeah. to this. Totally. You know, we have some history about pandemics, we have some history about hurricanes. You can see that kind of storm tracker. There's uncertainty about where it's gonna land, who it's gonna hit, et cetera. But if you can see it coming and you feel like, okay, there's something I can do, I can board up my house. Mm -hmm. I can put the kids in a car. We're going to go visit grandma a thousand miles away for a week, kids. Guess what? Sudden spring break. Then we can do something. But if you feel helpless, mm. if you don't know what to do or, or if it gets you, you're hearing news that the hospitals are going to be overwhelmed and they won't be able to care for you, that too really, really spikes anxiety, mm. the feeling that there's nothing you can do. And then I would say the last thing is the sense of unreliability in leadership. Mm. Uh, we're tribal animals. Imagine a band of 40 or 50 people. And if you feel like your leaders in the band, let's say, are competent and honest with you, and they're going to do the best they can, you might get wiped out, but they're, they're gonna, not going to go down without a serious, sincere fight. Okay, you're going to kind of calm down. On the other hand, if you suddenly realize that there is a threat coming toward you over the next range of mountains, and it looks pretty scary, and your leaders are lying to you or clueless or sitting on their hands about it, that also is really going to freak you out. Yeah. 